Welcome back again, folks. Welcome to all new viewers, to all new people that are trying to understand what we saw in the play. In fact, what we're trying to do is we're trying to share what we saw in order for you to be able to know what other traders are looking at. And the idea is to simplify it and put it in words that it makes it look a lot easier than it is. But the idea is to try to minimize all the flaw, flaw, all the complicated stuff. I'm trying to make it simple for you guys to understand what we saw and why we played it that way. So this is the Zoom play that we played this week. Zoom was bullish because of the fact that the new var variant from COVID is hitting a lot more than we thought. Um, there are a lot of talks about uh, rules and regulations that will be a little stronger than we thought. So we may go back to using Zoom a little more than we thought we would. So this was us on Monday looking at the chart. Looking here is Monday. So basically when you prepare you look at the situation and, and this is the one hour chart. I have a black line, this black line at 360, uh, 355, uh, sorry, 366 ish is drawn because I saw there was resistance right there, resistance pretty much there and right there. Resistance is where you have the buyers they stop buying at one point and they start selling. So sellers overtake the the, uh, the buyers. In fact, they exchange that little bag and then it, it becomes bearish. Oh, and then the bulls come back in all to that certain point. And all these, this, this top becomes that resistance. And if you see in my charts, I often do this here to explain what happens and this is the rejection of the same line. And this same line is where it drew my attention. Here, if you see this dark green line, it's a 200 EMA. Same place. So when we look at it, what I did, I put an alert in my chart right on this line. When it crosses the line, it op I open the chart and I look at it. Are we going to reject it and come back down? Or are we going to blow through it and start moving upwards? Now, because we were very bullish on it on that day, as soon as it alerted in my chart, I opened up a position because I knew it was going to go at least test this area here where there's no resistance in between the top here and there. So basically I took the 380 um, strike because we're going back to 380. We're very close to 380. However, it didn't go straight up, right? It was kind of trying, but the following day it had a wick to the top side, to the upside, sorry, wick to the upside and then it came down. Now that wick is really tricky. Um, if you're quick enough to hit the sell button as soon as it crosses the old resistance, because now the resistance is the old top from the previous day, we crossed it and then, you know, usually what we expect when we cross this, we get above it, down to it, and then we start moving towards where we thought we would go. But it didn't happen that way. It just went up and down very quickly. And why did it stop there? I'll show you right away. Same chart, right? See all these wicks? All these wicks at the bottom? Show you the wicks again. All these wicks I'm talking about. This is all the bottom that was bought. So basically, sellers are coming to a point and as soon as it gets under a line, it gets bought. Under a line, it gets bought happens to be the 200 EMA, but that's another story. Look at where they stopped buying. 
Let me get out here for a second. That's the line they stopped buying. Yeah, they stopped selling, sorry. And it happens to be the top of that wick on Tuesday. Now, if you're quick enough, you could have exited there and regroup and see what happened was this. We came down under my previous support line. Uh, it used to be resistance and now I was expecting it to be used as resistance. Sorry, support. So basically here was resistance. You know it's going to try as soon as it broke. What we were expecting was this, right? At least test it, come down and then go like this. But it didn't. Instead, rejected hard. We had a bearish day. But it ended up being higher, which was a good sign, saying that we still have buyers above the line that we had. And basically, it just had a found support at the end of the day on um, above that line. And on Wednesday, same thing, opened up above the same line. So all this is consolidation. Yet we were still above the um, bearish side, which was the seller's side where we were rejecting and coming back down. Nope, we are above it. And now we're above water and sailing above water, right? So looking back, we could have sold exactly on that on these wicks, but we did not. We were bu bullish on the play and we decided to exit in three different spots today. When we started blowing through, as soon as we went above this line, basically we are entering. Remember, these people were selling up until the point where we, they found no other sellers. They only found buyers at that bottom to go up. So basically crowd that is under and the crowd that is above is a totally different crowd, right? As soon as you get just a bit above this yellow line, you get into the other guys with the other guys, this crowd, not the other crowd. So as soon as we step into the new crowd, that's when you know it's going to be bullish for real. So it started to be very bullish. Now, what I was looking at is this first exit, second exit, and then I was looking for a third exit. And if you look back, See, let me share this with you. You know this area where people see sellers, sellers, sellers. You know this area is pretty much an area where you need to rethink about staying in. But it kept on going, right? So basically we took off partial. As we go up, you look back, you know there's, um, they are sellers at a certain point. And I had to look back because this, this looked a little confusing. So what I did instead, I changed to a daily chart. Sometimes you can look further back to know exactly what you you think you could uh, you could find, and what I what I found was this. Um, this is a daily chart. This is the gap we were looking at before. See it drop dramatically from there, but I was looking at this ramp up. Oh, by the way, just remember this uh, black line that we had. Wick came to it. Wick came to it, but this was used as an old resistance. So 
I played it in this area, but it's also useful um, a few months back. Well, this is back in June. But the important part is this. You know, we crossed it. And then look at it here. We have a very bullish day, very bullish. And then next day, same height, came down, came down, had a hard time, right? So this, these two guys, top of these two guys was my bet that we could see a top right there. And if you look at what's what here, we have a top of high of four, uh, 395.43. And just before is 395.44. Basically, it's a penny away. And this is where we decided to look at what was going to happen of very close to that. Sorry, I'll put it right there. 395.49, close enough, is the line that we had on this these two partners. And I'll put it on the one minute because my last exit was something I wanted to get out. And I'll show you something that I have um, a video on that is dated, I believe, last over Christmas holidays or something. So look back in December. I talk about the Tima. The Tima on the five minute, but now it's on the one minute because I wanted to have my last bit quite precise. So look at the Tima. Tima is the neon green line that you see here. On the one minute, it never closes under the Tima never closes under the Tima, and then we get to see this yellow line is the one we we had decided, 395, that could be a old resistance. Now, if I'm looking at it, other people are also looking at it. Sometimes I look at it and a lot of people don't care about it, but I'll, the idea is to have a point that eh, maybe people will have the same idea and start to take profit at that time. So basically we cross that yellow line and then oh here and look what what happened right after that. We dipped under Tima. Here it's still touching. Now it's not. Right? As we were crossing below and it's crossing under my yellow line, I decided to exit right here. Um I believe it was on this candle that I decided to exit. We weren't at the top of the day, very close to it. And I only kept a few contracts, but the idea was to sell on the way up on resistance that we saw and establish a point because now we're not at all time high. We have the, the, uh, the ability to look before where previous resistance was. So basically we're going to have to fight to all bag holders at that resistance, resistance point. People that bought there are super happy to be selling either flat, you know, break even and get rid of that bag that they're holding. Um, so should you, now you're green. You're happy to get out here and be happy with, uh, with the greens. So basically we bought um, the 380C, and then we carried it over uh, from Monday until today. We ended up having something that was very uh, successful. I believe we had over 300 and something percent um, on these last contracts. We still have a couple of runners um, for the um, end of uh, the week. But we are deep in the money, you know, when, when you sell at 395 and you're 380 um, contracts, you're deep in the money. So looking back, 
the very important points that you have to remember is this. Planning the trade is having an alert set on something that you are interested in playing. This was resistance. Now it's breaking above. You have news, chart, all go all looking your way and set target set your target do you have like pennies until the next um the next target or do you have potential this one had potential at least to climb to the first uh, to, to the first ladder um level so this was the entry point and the exit point is same thing when you start when you start moving up you have to start scaling out i always like to take half out at 100 percent. that way i have zero possible loss because i took all my the, the money that i invested in the first place out and the top one is not, oh, it doesn't really matter. No, you want to secure that money. So you have to look at it. And I'll go back to the TEMA. Look at the TEMA, which is a triple exponential moving average on the five minute. I showed you on the on the one minute here. That is, it was approaching my, um, my resistance that I had looked over a longer time frame. Sometimes can be useful. So I hope you guys um are learning a few things but you know the idea is to have a plan for an entry and a plan for an exit and this pretty much sums it up thanks for watching and i'll see you soon